Welcome to KDOL Community Spotlight on location at Oakland High, here for an in-depth conversation with the students and the U.S. Treasurer of the United States, Rosie Rios, who is one of the Bay Area's own daughters, now serving our country in, the, in D.C. for United States of America. I'm Shonda Scott, your host, and we're here to find out more about what actually the U.S. Treasurer does for our country. So just tell us, what do you think the U.S. Treasurer's roles and responsibilities are? Uh, I think they take care of the money, like like some type of banking, you know, I don't know, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying. Uh, uh, I think they, the U.S. Treasurer manages all the U.S.'s money, I think. Or, yeah, like that, and they probably lend it out to other countries or something. I think they handle, like, the finances of, like, the state and stuff. With me is the Honorable U.S. Treasurer, Rosie Rios, who's from the Bay Area, and we're happy to have her back home here at Oakland High to talk to the youth and tell them about her roles and responsibility as a U.S. Treasurer. So, Mrs. Rios, as a U.S. Treasurer, what actually are your roles and responsibility? Oakland and the students are very curious to know. They know you handle money, but they don't know everything else that you do. <laughs> so I actually have uh, several responsibilities. So first and foremost, I oversee the Bureau of Engraving and Printing and the U.S. Mint, where we produce the currency coin. It's about 4,000 employees, about a $4 billion budget. In addition, I'm the first person in the history of the administration to be appointed as a senior advisor to the secretary on issues of community development, so job creation, access to capital, small business, etc. So for those of you who don't know, I am from the Bay Area, born and raised in Hayward, California, and so my career really was here in this metropolitan area. So I actually focused on, on economic development and redevelopment. Uh, most recently, uh, up until 2003, I was a director of economic development and redevelopment for the city of Oakland, and many cities before that, and so uh, with a real estate background. So um, for me, this career path in economic development and real estate and then investment management prior to me joining the administration really translated into jobs, housing, access to capital. So who would have thought that this convergence of my career path would have resulted in me working in the administration in something so relevant during the economic recovery? Really, anything is possible. Anything is possible with the right motivation. And so, one thing that I always tell people is you should feel empowered. Feel empowered to pursue your dream, whatever that dream is. Don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise, other than following your heart. And again, everyone has to do well in school. That's a given. You have to. But from then, and I tell my kids the same thing. I, I, I really, really encourage you. And I hope you're all thinking about this as juniors and seniors uh, to go on to college. You know, this is a different world. It's a very different world from when I was in college in terms of, of, of how to, to get a good job and how to really have options. It's not just about getting a job or pursuing a career. It's having the ability to think and choose how you want to spend your life. And the more education you have, the more ability you have to choose your own career path. I can't emphasize that enough. So who, well, so for the seniors, who applied to college? I want to see. Wow. Excellent. Really, that's amazing. Congratulations. That's a big deal. So and when you think about that, when you go off to the Berkeleys and the Stanfords of the world, or the Chabots of the world, or the Cal States of the world, all of those are fabulous schools. You should also think about graduate school. I know you don't probably don't like to hear that. But the thing about graduate school that's really great is you choose your vocation. You choose your specialty. Because at least when you have that career path and you end up coming to some decision point and you want to choose X, Y, Z, when you have that education under your belt, you will have so many more options in front of you to choose from. So please keep that in mind uh, when you move forward. Um, so one of the other things and one of the reasons why I came here today, in addition to have this fabulous invitation from Congressman Margo Lee, was to talk about the financial capability challenge that Treasury hosts. So you heard a little bit about what I do at Treasury. I have many, many hats, uh, but my first and foremost is I do oversee the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, where we produce the money in your pocket. I also oversee the U.S. Mint, where we produce coins. I also oversee all bullion production, so all precious metals, platinum, gold, silver is also under me, uh, Fort Knox is under me. I'm also 
as was mentioned, a, a key liaison with the Federal Reserve. But the job that I am most proud of in my portfolio is I'm the first person ever in any administration <coughs> to be appointed to the secretary. So Secretary Geithner, you've heard of Secretary Tim Geithner, is my boss. I report to him. I am also a senior advisor to the secretary on issues of community development. So my career path in economic development and job creation and <coughs> capital has never been more relevant than what I'm doing now in the economic recovery. So I'm thrilled to be part of that. And, and part of Treasury also includes the Office of Financial Education. So I wear, again, many, many hats, but one of the, the hats that I'm talking about today is financial capability and access. And the, the ability, really, um, to help, especially this next generation, how to think about uh, your own finances, your own savings, your own investment, and your own kind of relationship with your future is really what it is. And so uh, I know that this particular demographic is um, a generation that, in my opinion, really needs a little bit more attention in thinking about what savings and investments look like. And so do you know, for example, when you open up a savings account? Well, first of all, I, boy, I mean, who, who here has ever gone to the bank with your parents and seen how they interact with the bank teller? Good. Good. 